Today I see the valley still struggling to survive. Whether it does or not, it will never be as I remember it. The borderlands, depression that was set off by the 1982 peso devaluation in Mexico, resulted in the closure of hundreds of valley businesses. Many people lost their homes, cars, land. Prior to 1982, U.S. store owners thrived on retail sales to Mexicans who came across the border for groceries and clothes and appliances. Well, goods on the U.S. side have become 10, 100, 1,000 times more expensive for Mexican buyers. Goods on the Mexican side have become 10, 100, 1,000 times cheaper for Americans. Because the valley is heavily dependent on agriculture and Mexican retail trade, it has the highest unemployment rates along the entire border region. It is the valley that has been hardest hit. How I love this tragic valley of South Texas, as Ricardo Sanchez calls it, this borderland between the Nuiches and the Rio Grande. This land has survived possession and ill use by five countries, Spain, Mexico, the Republic of Texas, the United States, the Confederacy, and the United States again. It has survived Anglo-Mexican blood feuds, lynchings, burnings, rapes, pillages. I still feel the old despair when I look at the unpainted, dilapidated scrap lumber houses consisting mostly of corrugated aluminum. Some of the poorest people in the United States live in the lower Rio Grande Valley an arid and semi-arid land of irrigated farming, intense sunlight and heat, citrus groves next to chaparral and cactus. I walk through the elementary school I attended so long ago that remained segregated until recently. I remember how the white teachers used to punish us for being Mexican. Tierra Natal, this is home. The small towns in the valley Los Pueblitos, with chickpens and goats picketed to mesquite shrubs. And Las Corianas, on the other side of the tracks, junk cars line the front yards of hot pink and lavender-trimmed houses. Chicano architecture, we call it, self-consciously. I've missed the TV shows where ho hosts speak in half and half, and where awards are given the category of Tex-Mex music. I have missed the Mexican cemeteries blooming with artificial flowers, the fields of aloe vera and red pepper, rows of sugar cane, of corn hanging on the stalks, the cloud of polvareda and the dirt roads behind the speeding pickup truck, el sabor de tamales, dires y venado. I have missed la yugua Colorado gnawing the wooden gate of her stall, the smell of horse flesh from Corrido's corals, corrals. He hecho menos las noches calientes sin aire, noches de linternes y lechuches, making holes in the night. I have come back. Tanto dolor <clears throat> me costó el alimento. I shade my eyes and look up. The bone beak of the hawk slowly circling over me, checking me out as potential carrion. In its wake, a little bird flickering its wings, swimming sporadically like a fish. In the distance, the expressway and the slough of traffic like an irritated sow. The sudden pull in my gut, la tierra, las aguatieros, roceros. My land, el, bien, el viento soplando la arena, El agarrijo um, debajo de un napalito me acuerdo como era antes una región desértica de vasta jornadas costeras de baja altura de escasa pluvia de chaparales formados por mezquites y huechaches. If I look real hard, I can almost see the Spanish fathers who were called the Cavalry of Christ enter this valley, riding their burrows. See the clash of cultures commence. <clears throat> I 
I stand at the river, watch the curving, twisting serpent, a serpent nailed to the fence where the mouth of the Rio Grande empties into the gulf. <coughs> El Retorno. <coughs> All movements are accomplished in six stages, and the seventh brings return. The I Ching. Tanto tiempo sin verte casa mia, mi cuna mi ondo nito de la huerta soledad. On that day, I search for our essential dignity as a people, a people with a sense of purpose, to belong and contribute to something greater than our pueblo. On that day, I seek to recover and reshape my spiritual identity. Animate, razza a celebrer el dia de la chicana. On that day, I say, yes, all you people wound us, wound us when you reject us. Rejection strips us of self-worth. Our vulnerability exposes us to shame. It is our innate identity you find wanting. We are ashamed that we need your good opinion, that we need your acceptance. We can no longer camouflage our needs, no longer let defenses and sp let defenses and fences sprout around us. We can no longer <coughs> withdraw. <coughs> we can no longer withdraw. To rage and look upon you with contempt is to rage and be contemptuous of ourselves. We can no longer blame you nor disown the white parts, the male parts, the pathological parts, the queer parts, the vulnerable parts. Here we are weaponless, with open arms, with our, only our magic. Let's try it our way, the mestizo way, the Chicana way, the woman way. On that day, I look inside our conflicts and our basic introverted racial temperament. I identify our needs, voice them, I acknowledge that the self and the race have been wounded. I recognize the need to take care of our personhood, of our racial self. <clears throat> On that day, I gather the splintered and disowned parts of La Guete Mexicana and hold them in my arms. Todas las partes de nosotros velen. <clears throat> On December 2nd, when my son goes into my first house, I celebrate El Dia de la Chicana y el Chicano. On that day, I clean my altars, light my cotalepuea candle, burn sage and copo, take el bano para espantar basura, sweep my house. On that day, I bear my soul, make myself vulnerable to friends and family by expressing my feelings. On that day, I affirm who we are. That's tomorrow. Estamos viviendo en <coughs> la noche de la raza, un tiempo cuando el tra trabajo se hace a lo quieto en el oscuro, el día cuando aceptamos tal y como somos y para en donde Vamos y porque ese día será el día de la raza. Yo tengo el compromiso de expresar mi visión, mi visión, mi sensibilidad, <coughs> mi percepción de la revelación de la gente mexicana, su mérito, estimación, honra, e precio y bel Leaders. Seeing the Chicana anew in light of her history, I seek an exoneration and seeing through the fictions of white supremacy, a seeing of ourselves in our true guises and not as the false racial personality that has been given to us and that we have given to ourselves. I seek our woman's face, our true features, the positive and the negative seen clearly, free of the tainted biases of male dominance. I seek new images of identity, new beliefs about ourselves, our humanity, and worth no longer in question. I am possessed by a vision that we are Chicanas and Chicanos have taken back 
or uncovered our true faces, our dignity and self-respect. It's a validation vision. The struggle is inner, Chicano, Indio, American Indian, Mojado, Mexicano, immigrant, Latino, Anglo in power, working class, Anglo, black, Asian. Our psyches reassemble, resemble the border towns and are populated by the same people. The struggle has always been inner and is played out in the outer terrains. Awareness of our situation must come before inner changes, which in turn come before changes in society. Nothing happens in the real world unless it first happens in the images in our heads. To the immigrant Mexicano and the re recent arrivals, we must teach our history. The 80 million Mexicanos and the Latinos from Central and South America must know of our struggle. Each one of us must know basic facts about Nicaragua, Chile, and the rest of Latin America. The Latinoist movement, Chicanos, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, and other Spanish-speaking people working together to combat racial discrimination in the marketplace is good, but it is not enough. Other than a common culture, we will have nothing to hold us together. We need to meet on a broader communal ground. Before the Chicano and the undocumented worker and the Mexican from the other side can come together, before the Chicano can have unity with Native Americans and other groups, we need to know the history of their struggle and they need to know ours, our mothers, our sisters, and our brothers, the guys who hang out on the street corners, the children on the playgrounds. Each of us must know our Indian lineage, our afro mestizasche our history of resistance. The dominant white culture is killing us slowly with its ignorance. By taking away our self-determination, it has made us weak and empty. As a people, we have resisted and we have taken expedient positions, but we have never been allowed to develop unencumbered. We have never been allowed to be fully ourselves. The whites in power want us people of color to barricade ourselves behind our separate tribal walls so they can pick us off one at a time with their hidden weapons, so they can whitewash and distort history. Ignorance splits people, creates prejudices. A misinformed people is a subjugated people. By your true faces, we will know you. I am visible. I see this Indian face, yet I am invisible. I both blind them with my beak nose and I am their blind spot. But I exist, we exist. They'd like to think I've melted in the pot, but I have not.